Formula 1 silly seasons can be pretty wild. And before we start, I want you to take a second to think, what is the most ridiculous driver appointment you could imagine? Maybe it's Toto Wolff and Christian Horner taking one of the seats on their teams to finally prove to the other who is the best. Okay, that is a bit outlandish. Maybe Vettel makes a return to Ferrari to win that world championship we all wanted him to win. Maybe that is too realistic. Today's video is about something in between the two. The return of the Sith, Nikita Mazepin. That comparison probably doesn't work, actually. Mazepin didn't have the presence to pull off a role as an evil overlord, leading an army of fanatics across the galaxy. Actually, his time in Formula 1 was rather timid. It wasn't until the fifth race of the 2021 season that he managed to not finish a race dead last. In fact, he would manage that incredible feat five times over the 22 race season. I can't actually remember a more unimpressive debut season. Those five not last place finishes cost Haas a total of $2,798,000 in repairs for the crashes he had over the course of the season. If we add together the number of cars he finished in front of over the course of the season, which was eight, that means he cost $348,750 in repairs per car he overtook. There's a stat for you that I bet you weren't expecting to get today. What I'm trying to tell you, in a very, very roundabout way, is that he wasn't just bad, he was also very expensive. In fact, he was so bad that he made a bigger impact on the sport than many drivers who drive for a few uneventful seasons before being let go for another exciting young talent. Antonio Giovinazzi and Nicholas Latifi were both on the grid that season as well, but their contributions to the sport are less memorable. Well, Latifi's might not be, but one crash can't compare to a season of craphousery that Nikita provided us with. The Mazepin family tried to replicate the Strolls by owning a team as a father-son unit. Dad buys and finances the team and the son gets to drive. The difference was that Dmitry Mazepin couldn't afford to buy a whole team, so he just offered enough sponsorship money to get his son a seat. And Lance Stroll would still have a chance of driving in Formula 1 without his dad owning the team. Nikita wouldn't. Dimitri tried to influence what happened within the team by making himself an absolute nightmare for Gunther Steiner to deal with, while his son demanded everything from his mechanics, while offering nothing in return. By all accounts, both of them were absolutely awful to work with. Ural Kali's sponsorship of the Haas F1 team saved them from going bankrupt. The year may have been a painful experience for everyone at Haas, but the money from the Mazepin family did save their jobs. Sometimes it can be hard to find the silver lining, but the estimated $13 million paid by the Russian fertilizer company to Gunther & Co. saved the team. As easy as it is to dismiss Nikita and his dad, we need to thank them for that. Nonetheless, Nikita was not up to Formula 1 standards. Many F2 champions never make it into Formula 1. Either there isn't a space for them, or they aren't quite good enough for that final leap up the motorsport pyramid. Nikita was not an F2 champion, though. In his open-wheel racing career, he never won a championship. His six race wins in six years is probably the worst open wheel record of a driver who made it to Formula 1, and it showed. He wrecked his car at turn three of his first race in Formula 1, and from that point on, his regular mishaps earned him the nickname Nikita Mazaspin. There is actually a website that tracked his spins throughout the season with footage of them all if you want to see a low light reel for yourself. Just Google Mazaspin and it's the first link that comes up. At this point, you're probably saying to yourself, yeah, this guy getting a seat in Formula 1 again would be the most insane thing to ever happen in a silly season. If you are, then you're right, that would be mental. That isn't stopping Nikita from trying, though. You have to give him credit. If he's nothing else, he is at least determined. So how is this enigma of a Formula 1 driver planning to make a return to the grid? Well, by suing the Canadian government, obviously. Yeah, you heard me right. He is suing the Canadian government in an attempt to return to Formula 1. Yeah, I have no idea either, but hopefully in the process of breaking it down for you, it will start to make sense. The tagline of this is that Nikita Mazepin is taking legal action against the Canadian government to have his sanctions lifted. He was dropped by Haas during the 2022 preseason due to the sanctions imposed on Russian sports people following the invasion of Ukraine, which led to the incredible effing Viking comeback of Kevin Magnussen. The Mazepin family is supposedly rather powerful in Russia, the country is run by Vladimir Putin and his oligarchs, the incredibly rich business leaders with close ties to the country's ruler. The family patriarch, Dmitry, was considered to be one of the 14 oligarchs 
whose influence and power meant they were direct contributors to the decision to invade Ukraine. At the time of the invasion, all 14 people were added to Canada's sanctions roster, with hundreds of individuals and organizations also added to the roster since, prohibiting financial dealings between those on the list with Canadian businesses. The same is true for large swathes of the EU, who essentially banned all members of the Mazepin family from having dealings with people and businesses based in their borders. That meant that Yural Kali couldn't be involved with Hass anymore, and that Nikita couldn't be involved with Hass anymore either. Well, it probably meant that, but the finer details never got examined because Hass used it as the excuse they needed to get the family out of their team. As Gunther said in his new book, I had to have a very difficult conversation with Nikita Mazepin, our driver. I know that his father, Dmitry, who is the majority shareholder of our main sponsor, Yural Kali, is close to Vladimir Putin, and at the end of the day, I don't want our team to be associated with someone who starts an effing war, you know? My copy arrives on Friday, and I can't wait to give it a read over the weekend. Anyway, back to Nikita, who was granted temporary relief against the EU sanctions eventually. He is still under sanctions from the Canadian government though, so now he's taken the Canadian government and Foreign Affairs Minister, Melanie Jolly, to federal court, with the hopes to have his name removed from the sanctions list in the country, so he can return to the F1 grid. As if that was the reason he isn't on the grid. According to a report in Canadian publication The Vancouver Sun, Mazepin has applied to the federal court to direct Melanie Jolly to remove him from the sanctions list, or at the very least, make a decision on said application and to confirm the outcome within five days. Mazepin is also asking the court to order interim relief, which would allow him to take part in racing activities in Canada. Global Affairs Canada have declined to comment on the case while the court case is being heard. The application filed in court notes Mazepin is a young sportsman and professional motorsport driver who is in no way involved in the aggression suffered by Ukraine and is not engaged in any economic sectors providing substantial revenue to Russia. This year's Canadian Grand Prix takes place on the 18th of June and will no doubt be a race there next year as well. While Mazepin isn't allowed to race in the country, there is exactly zero chance that any team would sign him up for a full-time race seat. If he is able to get himself removed from the sanctions list, then he'll probably still have zero chance of getting a seat, but he clearly doesn't think so. To be fair to Nikita, he isn't his father, and we can't assume that he has anything to do with the war in Ukraine. So let's take a minute to consider how he would actually make a return to Formula 1. Several months back, the FIA opened up an expression of interest process, with the view to potentially accepting up to two new teams onto the Formula 1 grid in the future. You will have heard of the Andretti Cadillac bid, but there are reportedly plenty of other interested parties who have expressed interest. One such party is the Mazepin family. Remember the comparison to the strolls I made earlier? They seem to be the inspiration here as well. Russian news agency Ria Novosti reports that the Mazepins, Dmitry and Nikita, hold an interest in potentially launching their own team and are currently weighing up the idea. Yesterday I had an interesting conversation with an unnamed source close to Mazepin, Russian journalist Malia Melnikova stated. It was about the fact that Dmitry Mazepin has not given up the idea of starting his own team in Formula 1 and is ready to invest in a new project. Formula 1 allowing the Mazepin family to start a Formula 1 team would be incredible. There was a list of criteria released that potential applicants had to prove they can meet and I'm pretty sure the Mazepins will struggle to meet number 5, number 6, uh, number 7 and probably number 8 as well. If Andretti isn't getting a spot, then this lot definitely aren't either. So is Nikita going to be returning to the grid anytime soon? I certainly don't think so. Is that going to stop him from trying? Absolutely not. And you can safely assume that suing the Canadian government is just another part of his plan. What do you think of Nikita's attempts to return to the grid? Which driver not currently in the sport would you prefer to see over him? Let us know your choices in the comments down below and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.